I'll tell you, developing the rub is one of the most time-consuming things because it doesn't do you any good to taste the stuff raw. So you make a blend that you think is good, well then you gotta make a brisket. And that takes another 15 hours, and then you say, you know, I think it needs a little more of this. Now you gotta make another brisket. It's another 15 hours. So it really is, you know, days, weeks, and months to, to develop a rub, and we did spend that kind of time on it. Barbecue, you know, historically has been made with what, what at one time were really cheap cuts of meat. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those sort of poor foods that people used to, people who didn't have any money, to buy these really cheap cuts that naturally are very tough and difficult to work with, and they would just cook them for really long periods of time to make them edible. It was the only way they could afford to eat. Um, but there's a, a great relationship between how tough a cut of meat is and how flavorful it is. The, more, the tougher it is, the more flavor it's got, which is why you know a nice tender cut like a filet is nice and easy to cut through and easy to cook, but you almost always need to wrap bacon around it and top it with blue cheese to get any flavor out of it. Um, whereas brisket, you can eat this stuff plain. It doesn't need sauce, it doesn't need bread, it doesn't need any condiments. It's just, it's just a great flavored meat. So this is a this is a, a whole brisket. Uh, there's actually two muscles that make up the brisket. The uh, the bottom muscle that you see down here that kind of runs throughout the entire brisket. Um, it's called the flat. It's the leaner of the two muscles. Uh, it's also the more dense of the two muscles. Some people like to just cook with that. It uh, it cooks a little bit easier. Um, it's easy to slice because it's it, it, it holds together very well for slicing. Um, but we kind of do the opposite. There's a, a second muscle here. This is called the point. And it's the fattier muscle. It's really nicely marbled, got a lot of flavor in it, uh, and it's really a shame that more people don't use it. It does make the brisket a little tougher to cook because what you see here is you've got a very thin part of the brisket and you've got a much thicker part of the brisket here. So it's tough to get those to cook evenly. Um, but we, we think it's worth it. What happens is that, that, that fattier cut that sits on top, the point, actually keeps the rest of the brisket moist through cooking. So it's really important for barbecue in particular to use the whole brisket. What we do is we take the leaner portion uh, that kind of extends out here, and we, we, we chop that up and you sell it as chopped brisket. The reason for that is, while it's gonna be a little bit leaner and therefore a little bit drier, um, the chopped brisket absorbs a little more sauce, so it kind of compensates for the dryness a little bit. But also you get this nice, um, you get a, a better ratio of the nice crusty bark uh, mixed in with that, so that also kind of compensates for the dryness. This is the bread that we put our, uh, our sandwiches on. We, all, we departed a little bit from tradition on this. Traditionally, barbecue is served with white bread or just a plain old hamburger bun. Um, it inevitably falls apart when you eat it. We wanted to do something a little bit more substantial so that you could actually eat your sandwich like a sandwich. This is more of a, uh, a brioche bun. Uh, it's not technically brioche, but it's kind of like a brioche. It's uh, got a little bit more body to it, but really doesn't, in our opinion, uh, get in the way of, of uh, the flavor of the meat. It really does let the meat be the star of the show. It's a nice soft bread. You don't want anything really crusty with barbecue because it does tend to overpower the meats a little bit. So what we do when we start working with the brisket, we try to kind of cut it down a little bit so we can get the slices to the, to the right size for the sandwich. We're gonna cut off the portion that we're gonna use for chopped brisket. Then I'm going to cut this nice slicing portion in half so we end up with some really good sandwich sized slices. The tricky thing about brisket, you always want to make sure to be cutting against the grain and the direction of the grain kind of changes depending on where in the meat you're cutting from. So it's, uh, there's uh, a little bit of an art to this. Certain parts of the brisket juicier than others, or yeah, this is and then, you know, the the part that we use for sliced is always going to be the juiciest part of the brisket. You can see, if you look here, all this really nice marbling that you see. You, know, you squeeze into that, you can see. Pieces. It's like meat candy. 